Hey y'all, it's Burgess Taylor, our Journey with Burgess, and it's time for a studio update, for a barn to studio conversion update. So Dave and I went to Lowe's, and we looked around, we did some research, we were researching light fixtures, we ended up getting some, we researched insulation, we found some sawhorses that we're going to buy, but we haven't bought yet, because it's not time to get those yet. We're putting our money towards things bit by bit because this is a lot more expensive than people realize. And we don't have the money to buy everything up front, unfortunately. So we have to buy bit by bit and we're buying to get things done. Like with the insulation, we've got two rolls. We're going to get, uh, we're going to go to Harbor Freight this weekend and see if we can find a staple gun that will hook to David's air compressor. Uh, sorry about that. And if we can find one, that would be great. And we're going to do the two rolls that we have, the R13 faced insulation on the walls. Now that the electrician has pretty much finished everything, he's going to be back next week to finish up a couple of little things. But that really shouldn't interfere with what we are doing right now. This weekend we're going to be caulking. And then we are, if we have time, we may or may not get insulation up. Insulation is probably going to be next weekend. So... What we are doing, what we we were, what we are doing, and what we were doing, when we went to Lowe's was price checking and looking at everything and doing some research. We wanted to look at the insulation, the different kinds of insulation, what it, what we needed to get, what everything we would have to purchase. We also were looking at beadboard and paneling. Um, we looked at sheetrock. We're not going with sheetrock. There's a what looks like silver air bubble, like packing air bubble. You know the things you pop bubble wrap that's what it looks like but it's a it's a type of insulation so we looked at a lot of different things people some people recommended spray foam insulation we don't want to do that because there have been people who have had spray in foam insulation done wrong and then had chemical reactions to it allergic reactions there um there's a couple of families where they end up having to have it all taken out of their ceilings and their house in general like there was one couple who had to have their whole roof removed and then had it had it redone and put all new insulation in it because it ended up testing positive for formaldehyde and it had a chemical reaction and they couldn't even breathe but they had when if they walked into the house they had to have air ma a respirator things on air mask things so anyway we looked at all the different kinds of insulation we were looking at paneling and there's a bunch of different kinds of paneling. There's actually different kinds of wood that locks into place that you can use. Um, all kinds of things. I think what I'm going to do is a white bead board and um, it comes in four by four feet by eight feet sheets of panel. It's a like wood. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Not, not positive, but it's only $10 and 88 cents a sheet. Whereas some of the other ones that we looked at, like pine and other things, were a lot more expensive. This isn't my home. It's going to be my studio. And though I'm going to be spending a great deal of time in there, I'm going to have furniture covering up a good bit of the walls. I'm going to put art up on the walls. I don't, I'm going to put a pegboard up on the wall. What is on the wall, as long as I can hang things on it, put furniture against it, I don't, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, because that's not what is important to me <laughs> I just need it to cover the wall cover the insulation and be okay enough so beadboard is fine with me um, we've looked at a lot of different options and if I didn't need to move in quicker than I'm then I need to get it done yesterday to be honest but we don't have yesterday money so I might would choose a different option if we could take our time with it but as it is, I'm going for the best, least expensive option out there that isn't super, super cheap. Speaking of less expensive options, we are probably going to get the ladder and the nail gun and the staple gun from Harbor Freight unless we can't find them there because we want to get a nail gun and a staple gun that will hook to David's air compressor. Because if you're not aware, I have rheumatoid arthritis in my hands and my neck and shoulders. And that would make things so much easier for me to do some of this. And uh, so we were looking at options of different things like ladders, looking at how much they cost, things like that. We really didn't want to choose something that was super expensive. And Lowe's has decent ladders, but they're a bit on the pricey side.
since we're probably going to go to Harbor Freight to get things like ladders and staple guns and nail guns and things like that, we did want to at least look at the prices that Lowe's had and that's where we made up our mind that we were definitely probably going to go to Harbor Freight for some of the stuff. But luckily uh, our Lowe's does have quite a bit and um, we are price checking and doing researching and if we have to we do have like a Home Depot about an hour away and I think there is a local lumber yard that I am going to check into before we purchase anything like paneling because I'm still not quite sure. I know I pretty much want like beadboard. It'll be easier, but I'm not quite sure about the color or the type yet, but it is less expensive. There are sheets of, of wood paneling that you can get that are $29, $24. Um, like I said, the beadboard's like $10.88 a sheet at Lowe's. I looked at uh, several different options. We even looked at sheetrock, which I'm not a big fan of because it's very labor intensive and time consuming. And this is, I don't have a lot of time to do this. My mom and my son are actually here today. Um, they've delivered some stuff. They're going back to my mom's house to get some more of their stuff. Once we get all of this finished, we'll be going back to get the furniture. Yeah, until we get this done, my poor mom is gonna be sleeping on our sofa sleeper. <laughs> um, we do have the guest room, but she said she she is a night owl and she said she would rather because Doug's going to be trying to find a job and going to work that she would rather be on the sofa sleeper which that's her choice that's what she chose to do so we, like I said we have been looking and doing research and trying to figure out what our best options are so far speaking of wood I decided to paint my flooring and what I wanted to do was uh, have like a really pretty color floor to put like a clear coat over it and in order to do that I had to wood putty the cracks in the floor where each piece of plywood meets and I had to kind of putty where the nails are at. I'm probably going to have to put some silicone or some caulk over some of the nail heads. We'll see how that goes but it was uh, quite time consuming and it was actually much easier to do with my fingers than to do with the uh, thing that you know, you buy to straighten it out, to smooth it over. Yeah. Uh-huh. And what I also realized after I got it on there, I got a couple of splinters during the making of this uh, video. <laughs> but one of the other things I realized is that, that wood's not perfect. And I realized that some of this was actually going to look pretty good because it was kind of going to show up a little bit under the paint. And I liked the idea of that. I didn't need for it to be perfect. I just wanted it to, you know, be done. So aside from the splinters and the fact that I was uh, on my bottom or my hands and knees doing this for quite a while, I actually was able to listen to some YouTube videos, uh, listen to an audible book while I got a lot of this done. So it wasn't so bad. Um, it was actually pretty decent weather during the one part though it was quite warm out there so you're gonna see me painting the floor and I ended up with paint on my I ended up with wood putty all over me I ended up with paint all over me uh, yesterday evening and the day before when I was out there caulking I ended up with the caulk all over me I'm messy which is why I'm painting this floor and putting poly acrylic over it and not getting expensive flooring where I have to worry about it that was part of the reason I didn't really want to get something I had to be precious about. I'm going to be creating art, all different kinds of art in this studio, and I don't want to have to be precious about things. It's going to be a working studio. I'm eventually, I hope, going to start dabbling in more like gouache and maybe get a stand-up easel, and I don't know that I'll ever work with oils, but uh, now that I know that matte acrylic isn't sticky, I had to fix that by the way. I had to ha um, hammer the, the couple of the nails down to get that one to stay um, because of the, the way that it was. So this is what the floor ended up looking like. And with the wood putty, I had to let the wood putty dry. Go back in a couple of days later after it was dry and paint. Now, I'm glad I actually painted the floor. I do have to do another coat. Um, before the electrician came because it made um, it actually protected the wood putty because he did a lot of 
um, work in there and we ended up with wood chips and wood dust and sawdust and all kinds of stuff all over that and it just it would have been a mess otherwise so I cleaned up a lot of the mess that was already in there from it being delivered and from going in and out of it and measuring things and we were tracking dirt in there I do have to build some steps Dave and I are going to have to build steps and we are eventually going to build like a little patio I won't have to worry about that but I, I've got a mess to clean up so now I'm actually going to be working on the floors and um, I wore a pair of old jeans that had holes in them because I knew I, I forgot the rag and I was like I ended up wiping paint on my jeans and that's okay because those are going to be the same jeans that I'm going to be wearing to do the rest of the work in this barn with <laughs> and it's okay I've had those Calvin Klein jeans for forever and I've actually lost about 10 or 12 pounds and um, so they're a bit baggy and I had trouble I should have worn a belt but I got it done I got the floor done and like I said it turned out a beautiful color um, once all of the insulation and um, stuff is done I'm gonna go back in there I'm gonna um, mop it real quick with like the Swiffer the wet Swiffer and then I will repaint um, and then I will put the clear coat on it I'm gonna do that before we start putting the beadboard up because I don't want to get red paint on my beadboard <laughs> so uh, I'm fine with getting a little bit of the red paint on those two by fours you see at the base but I'm actually really happy with the floor I'm, I'm you can tell how pretty a color it is and overall I'm just really excited I'm ready for all of this to come together the great thing about this red is that it's the exact same red that the top of my craft table not my desk but my craft table is painted so now you can see where um, I've done most of the flooring I'm sorry the cameras you know you can see where I've done part of it um, I'm filming with my phone which I'm really not used to and I'm trying to get used to filming some of this with my phone so that's what's going on with that and I'm uh, finishing up the floor and trying to get it all together the electrician showed up these pictures are not necessarily in order neither is the video but you can get a general idea he came he is a master electrician and he did the trench in no time I was so glad that I didn't have to dig that trench and he put the conduit down he actually put two pieces one has my Ethernet cord in it and the other has the electrical stuff in it um, we chose to do that because the telephone company wanted to charge us like $300 and then I would have had to have a separate internet thing which I wasn't going to do so we searched online to figure out what was the easiest best way to do this we talked to the electrician I talked to another friend of mine who does this kind of stuff and what we found out was we could run the ethernet cord so I bought a 75 foot ethernet cord so that if ever I decide to move my computer desk um, and my computer to the other side of the barn or whatever I can move it and have still have some room or if we ever have to replace the Ethernet cord we can do that too because it is not a forever thing they don't last forever those Ethernet cords so you can see the track lighting um, and this is where I'm gonna stop for this part and there is light there is light y'all we have light So now you can actually see the plugs. Like I said, we have a couple of receptacles that need covers. Um, the wiring is done. Those are the boxes. This is the mess that was this after the electrician was here. Um, we had to clean up some stuff. <laughs> but I have lights in the barn. I have lights. Um, I have a little cute porch light. I'm so happy about it. It looks so cute. Just so cute. So this is where we're at and now I'm caulking and um, and I've cleaned up the mess. I've cleaned up the mess and now I'm actually caulking and things like that. So we're uh, quite a few steps closer. I, like I said, I have two bundles of insulation. So hopefully over the next, there's my ethernet cord. Um, so hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll have at least some of the insulation done, all of the caulking done. 
and um, I'll have another update for you as soon as possible. Thank you for being here and for watching, and I hope you have a good one. Bye, y'all. Thank you.